Namaste. This is working. Namaste. My Zen zebras, my Bella butterflies, my unique unicorns, my merry mermaids, and my merry mermen. I know you're out there. My magical beings. Bella butterflies, did I say that? My Zen zebras, my namaste ninjas. Okay, I think I got everybody. How's everybody doing? It's Friday! Fist bump for Friday. Fist bump for Friday. Yeah! Oh, that looks perverted. Okay. Uh, I apologize for the really weird late night pictures that I put on face. Uh, God forbid I put that on Facebook. Uh, <sighs> saging it up. Let's sage it up together. We made it through a week that was very rough. And, you know, meanwhile, it was Tuesday through Friday. Next week is Monday through Friday in the same class. But luckily, you know, the three um, ladies that I was working with, the three teachers, were very nice to me. And it's like getting validation finally. Um, I've been working in these schools for four years now, almost five. 2020, it'll be at the start of the fifth year as a sub here in Texas. And um, I never thought I would get the validation that I was looking for. Um, I really don't want to be in special ed because I don't get to be the teacher. I don't get the breaks, but I, I really want to help out and I really felt felt that I was kind of needed and um, a lot of times I didn't feel like I was doing a good enough job but going back skip back to what I was saying let me turn off my air yeah I need the sage so I need to sage it up for a second um, I believe in you know fulfilling whatever you try to do if you can if it's possible to fulfill you know what I set out to do which was two weeks in this one class um it's just you know some kids are severely autistic and some kids are just severe behavior problems and they're like ranged from kindergarten to second grade and um but the ladies I work with uh the teacher is pregnant she's expecting and um it's just such you know a rough job uh changing diapers of adult kids and I know she probably wanted me to do that I did it the one day and I just I can do it, but you know, like next week, but I did clean the floor and the toilet, um, which she thanked me for. Um, anyway, it's, it's a rough job, but I'm, I'm trying to do it because she appreciates, they appreciate me and um, half the time I really feel like I'm just, I'm, I'm just like a nothing, you know, not doing anything. I mean, like literally the kids, maybe two out of the 11 kids speak the rest of them don't even speak they just you know make they can't even make a conversation but two of them can maybe two or three of them three of them um doesn't always make sense but anyway uh they were nice to me and i could tell that you know they were they kept saying you're coming back next week really are and every day that I left this week they would say we're gonna see you tomorrow will we see you tomorrow so I would say of course you know even though you know like every everything in my bot and my back and my neck is killing me um that's just my condition it's like that when I do a regular day um I felt bad that I didn't do the diapers but I just I I I can't do it um, you know, I will try to do it because I want to try to help out next week a little bit better. 
and just because you know the teacher is pregnant and she really shouldn't have to be doing that there are two other girls uh, women there you know aides that are uh, helping out look a yellow school box is just pick pulling up as I was talking about school oh and here's another one watch watch did you see it it's actually getting dark can't believe it's getting dark anyway off to bigger and better things we made it to Friday fun day and I got this from DC. DC, thank you so much. You know I'm going to collage this beautiful card. Just like uh, Brenda's card was with the fairy on it. I'm definitely going to collage this with the mermaids. It's so beautiful. And it says... Uh-oh. Uh -oh. I lose everything in this car. I'm not even going to scan the car to show you what a dumpster it is. But I'll clean it out one of these days. Um, it says, we mermaid to be friends. Get it? We mermaid to be friends. Thank you, DC. I absolutely love it. But DC, I have a message for you. Can you please tell me I got very mixed up with... I have a lot of stuff to read through. Thank God. Namaste. Namaste to God. And namaste to the universe and to all my subs. And I'm up to, finally, I think I'm up to 270 or two, uh, no, 580 subs. Um, let's try to make it to 1,000, but I'd be, uh, I'll be happy for 778 subs. Okay? Come on. I've been on, uh. YouTube since July, and I know uh, a certain tarot card reader <clears throat> that is all the way up to 200 subs already, okay, and she just started, literally, just started, so come on, everybody, if you're watching me, please subscribe, a lot of people have not subscribed, and they just watch me, I'm thankful, namaste, <laughs> I hope I help you, but uh, I think I deserve for you to subscribe, even if you don't watch again, at least, you know, I, I need to get up to, uh, sorry, I, I've been having this pain here all day under the clavicle bone, I was trying to Google it at work, because I took two painkillers, two, two muscle relaxes, while I was at work, they weren't kicking in, the first one totally didn't kick in, I took turmeric, that didn't help. And then uh, the second painkiller, finally, there was a little less pain. But I was having such a bad pain that I couldn't even leave the classroom to go on my 10 minute break for my lunch. So I just couldn't get up. It hurt so bad here. So, of course, I was thinking, you know, I'm dying and it's breast cancer and it's all these things. I'm sure it's just a muscle pull, but anyway, it hurts right under here, right here, okay, you're not on for my aches and pains, but DC, please tell me the prints that you want, I thought you wanted the animal prints, and then you said you wanted the love print, which was the love in Chinese, or just the love, the red love one, um, yeah, please let me know because I'm a little mixed up on what you want. And um, I have a, a extra book. I have something extra I'm going to be sending you. Okay? I don't know if you like sage, but um, it's just a special book for your grandson and a special a little book, a book for you and your husband. And please don't ever give up. And just, you know, keep on putting one foot in front of the other and enjoying your, your, your grandchildren, your other grandchildren, and enjoying your son and your daughter and your, um, your animals and the birds and just enjoying your home and things will get better. I promise you, things, you, you, you'll get signs 
more often from Owen. And um, just keep on praying, which I know you do. Things will get better, okay? So please just tell me um, in the comments what you want or even the Gmail. Um, I'm just, I got a little bit mixed up because you said you wanted something at first and then you said change it. I thought you said you wanted the pink mermaid love. Was that you? Yeah, I think that was you because I only have, I have your order and Michelle Criswell, I'm getting your order out tomorrow, the solar plexus. Oh, and DC, you said you wanted the solar plexus, but that's two pictures. One is with the elephant and one's with the daisy. Did you not want the one with the daisy? So I'm just a little confused. Um, <clears throat> just uh, kindly uh, put it in the comments for me, okay? Thank you so much. Thank you so much for this. And your, your note and your Gmail and your pictures. Um, a lot of people have been sending me Chantel uh, and Crystal. Um, I know, Crystal, you were waiting for another reading for your mom about your brother, your twin brother, Chad. Um, I kind of put what I, I got because, you know, you can't turn this thing off. Sometimes you can't turn it off. Anyway, if I come up with something, I see something, I, I'll, I'll tell you in the Gmail or the comments. But a lot of people are private, so uh, the Gmail works good for that. Um, just don't send me too many pictures because I, I, I don't know how to erase things. And it's, it's make my phone get um, filled up. And, you know, I can't get... This retro girl can't get a new phone. I, I like everything to stay the same, but I know that doesn't happen. Sorry to everybody um, that have been asking for readings. I will go back to them, but I have a super busy week next week, and with the physical job, uh, I just want to keep it kind of like mild, just coming on, having coffee. Oh, let's, let's see what I'm drinking today. That's all they had in the machine. So I said, it's Friday, I, I should treat myself with, I wanted, I didn't want coffee, I wanted, I wanted something else, a little rougher than soda, but you know, I was at school, so I said, I need something for my sage and my conversation. Saging it up with my subs. I'm saging it up with my subs. Does anybody else sage it up with you? I don't think so. I don't think so. I know that I act crazy sometimes, but that's why you love me. Now go ahead and hit that like button and that subscribe button, but you don't have to worry about the bell if you want to do the bell. My bell doesn't work. People, you know, upload things all the time and I'm subscribed to a million people and the bell never rings, so I'm sure it's a technical issue. But I, I still, you know, I'm always checking out people's... Oh, hold on a second. One second. Let me put you down because I'm really hot, so I gotta take off my jacket. I almost said my shirt. One second. Sorry about that. Namaste. It was like a brain freeze or something. Uh, yeah, this hurts right here. But now, oh, it's four, four, four. I'm sure, my husband is waiting for me. But I wanted to jump on because, like, after work and such an intense thing where I don't have a break. You know, I always think about coming on and just taking a walk with you and just drink my coffee with you or whatever. 
yesterday, my husband. <laughs> so I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's the soda, okay? It's the soda and it's the salsa. All right. I know I'm not supposed to drink bubblies, but bubblies is my life. I need it. Come on, please. All right. See, I get silly. It's a serious subject. And, uh, um, anyway, my husband went to the doctor for a different issue for his GERD. And I was at work and then I text him, you know, I tried to sneak in a text, um, to find out what the doctor said, because I was really worried because he's going through so many issues with the, his, you know, kidney stone. He that. He was bleeding out, um, and the reason why he was bleeding so much and blood clots is because he's on blood thinners for his heart. So, um, he went to the doctor for his stomach, for his GERD, because he has so much acid reflux, and they have him on 70,000 different medicines. And he's just getting really, you know, tired of this pill and that pill and this pill and I mean he takes the guy takes so many pills but then again I need him to because I don't want him to leave me I don't want him I mean he's only 59 but ever since we moved here um actually a year later he had trouble but he has diabetes and now you know and he has heart disease so anyway he gives me the message that while I'm at work in this difficult job, and he was like, I don't want to even tell you, I don't want to upset you. But I said, just tell me, because I need to talk to you, and I, I felt bad that I was even leaving him to go to work, but I didn't work for a month, because New York, and you know, well, three weeks, I shouldn't say a month, uh, over three weeks I didn't work for. Anyway, I was trying to make back some money, and, he said basically that, you know, he has to get an operation in, in January, soon in January, like January 13th, I think. So prayers up, please, prayers up, namaste. Um, he, you know, that when you have so much acid reflux over a long period of time, it eats away at your, I think, esophagus and also the valve, um, is very blocked down by his um, right before it gets to his stomach so that's why he was choking on food and he in three days lost 10 pounds now he's a big guy so I thought that was good because the doctors always want him to lose weight and he does try with his bicycle he sometimes he's on it two three times a day at least two times a day he goes on it 20 minutes at a pop so sometimes 40 minutes over an hour you know so he's trying and he got to the point where he didn't even use a cane um, but now he's back to the cane because his back hurt from the kidney problems and so the doctor says he needs this operation and he's at a high risk for um, throat cancer doesn't smoke doesn't drink you know I do all the drinking <laughs> but um just seriously it's just I feel so bad for this guy and this is exactly what my reader said that my parents my mom and his parents they just would you know he was channeling them and and he kept saying they just feel so bad for your husband and and I was like does that mean you know like bad news and uh, I'm just always you know I put up a good front to you guys and to anybody who knows me um, even though I cry every other minute but I do put up a good front you know with the jokes and laughing and stuff because who would want to take it seriously I moved 3,000 miles away four years ago from a place you know that I lived in my whole life to 52 years of my life 52 years and age 52 I got remarried, you know, I, at 22 I got married for the first time, 
And then at 52, I got married for the second time. And so that in itself is a, a huge thing. But then to put on top of that, sorry, um, to put on top of that, um, that I have to worry about losing him. And he's so young and, um, but I won't lose him because everybody's going to pray for him, right? Right? If you're going to pray for him, um, and his name is Devin. A lot of people, um, write Devon and he hates that. <laughs> even my best friend of 40 something years writes Devon. Um, even on, she gave us cake knife and, you know, server for my, for our wedding, a silver cake knife and fork and... <laughs> It says Kathleen and Devon, D-E-V-O-N. No, it's Devon, just like Kevin, because his mom was gonna name him Kevin, K-E-V-I-N, and but it, in, in the neighborhood there was all these Kevins in Brooklyn, where he grew up. So she decided to be different, and she replaced the K with a D, and she named him Devon Dwayne. <laughs> Devon Dwayne Simpson. Anyway. Um, please pray for him, and his name is D-E-V-I-N, and uh, prayers are everything. Prayers, you know, I just, you know, we're, we're only married four years, but we're together for, in 2020, it'll be 10 years, because we met in 2010, and uh, we dated for five years. And I never thought I would get married again. I was married for 24 years. So who does that? You know, like, I thought I was a lifer with the first one. I was just, you know, but then one day I woke up and I said, this is wrong. I'm in the wrong place. I'm in the wrong marriage. I'm in the wrong house. I just remember looking out the window thinking, this is not the house for me. I'm in the wrong house. Even though I downsized into a small little apartment. <laughs> <laughs> but when I walked in that apartment there was a snowstorm and the tree was all frozen over and it was dripping and I felt my mother right next to me and she said this is right this is the place that you're gonna live and be happy in and it, 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 it's so hard to get divorced I'm gonna do a video on that it's so hard to change your life it's like jumping off a mountain it's like being on the boat of the Titanic and saying, I'm the king of the world. That's how I always felt about it. Because you could stay in a bad marriage and you could stay in a bad relationship. But if I did that, number one, I probably wouldn't be here today. Or number two, I would be here today, but I would be... Maybe in a psych ward. Um, you know, I had several breakdowns um, because of things that were going on at work and things that were going on in my marriage. So, um, just, you know, when you feel in your gut that something isn't right, you know, like I never wanted to give up. I didn't want to give up my job. I didn't want to give up my marriage. I didn't want to give up my family. You always want the dream, just like Shanann. You want the dream. You know, even if it doesn't have a white picket fence, which I did want the white picket fence, by the way. And uh, my first husband said, no, we're just not doing that, whatever. Um, but, you know, you want your kids and, and your house and your home and a good career and friends. You, you want that dream. So this, it's not, you're not wrong for wanting that dream. But the thing is, if the wrong, it's the wrong person or the wrong job that, you know, doesn't bring you happiness. And nobody brings you happiness 24 seven, 365, nobody does. You have to find your own happiness within yourself. But um, here's an example. When I, one of the therapists I was going to, 
um, when I was, you know, going through, you know, many troubles and grieving my mother when she died, grieving my father when he died. Um, and they would always ask me about my marriage. So I would try to keep my marriage out of it because who wanted to open that can of worms? So one time, one of the therapists said to me, uh, you know, like, are you happy in your marriage? And I said, if I could just, you know, go away on vacation more often with my husband, you know, we always get along when we go to Wildwood or we go to Bermuda, you know, when we go away on vacations, we always get along really good. Sorry, I was getting parched. And he said, oh, she said, I forget who it was, if it was a girl or a boy therapist, been to all of them um, and they said to me well anybody can get along for a week how long is a vacation usually in my case it was only a week five days or eight days so I said what well, I didn't understand what your point is and and they said well you could get along with somebody on a trip where everything's foods being served to you you don't have to worry about cooking or cleaning you're going you're dressing up or even if you're not dressing up you're just laying on a beach or you're laying in a hotel anybody can get along during that time but what the real test is is if you could sit in your living room and be totally comfortable with that person. Or you could just sit at your kitchen table and have a beautiful conversation that, you know, is multi-dimensional and you're making each other smile or laugh. And um, you can have an argument, but then make up later or just even talk it out. Um, and I was like, well, sometimes I really when he's late home from work and he's at the bar and I cooked the dinner and I came home from work, cooked dinner and put, set up the table and, and he doesn't come home, I secretly in my head ask God to please let him go to the bar instead of coming home. And I said, is that bad or is that weird? And he said, yes, that's not, he goes, it's not weird. It, it, it just means that you don't really get along with that person and you don't really want to spend time with them and I said well because we would end up getting into a fight and sometimes we would get into a fight early in the morning before both of us were leaving for work and that's how it would be and the therapist said no that's not a normal relationship that's not a good relationship you shouldn't be afraid like I was totally afraid of him um, of how our relationship would be when summer was coming up because I was a teacher. So when summer comes up, you're home for 72 days. And I was fearful of that. Sometimes I would get a job, uh, you know, another job, like, you know, being a, a, an adjunct in a college because I taught English, I taught business um, in three different colleges. I didn't teach business. I taught how to apply to work in a business like resume writing anything to do with writing creative writing English the college of Staten Island Wagner College and St. John's University anyway a little resume there toot toot is that a train going by <laughs> little jokey there for you to, to um, take away the seriousness anyhow long story short I began this conversation talking about my message from Devin and so what happened was I, I wanted to leave the job when he told me the text about him not getting a good a good thing from the doctor and he said don't leave you know you have to stay there they need you and just see me when you get home and I said, I'll come straight home. He goes, please do. Please come straight home. You know, don't sit in your car saging it up doing videos because I really want to see you and I want to be with you. Talk it over. And so when we moved here, oh, that's why I didn't do a video yesterday. But anyway, when you don't need to see this face every day. Um... But when we moved here, another thing, 
um, compared the first marriage to the second marriage. Um, a lot of people like in my family and my friends would say, oh, Devin's going to be retired. How are you going to deal with that? Are you looking forward to that? He's going to be home all the time. And I was kind of semi-retired because I left my job. I had to resign from my job because I was too young to um, retire. You had to wait till you're 55. So I was only 52. So I had to resign. And then when I, a couple of years later, when I turned 55, um, then you could uh, retire and then get a small pension that I get. Anyhow, um, I would say no. I don't feel that about Devin because we were friends. We, when we first met each other, we didn't go out. We were friends. I didn't really like him that way. He didn't like me that way. We weren't each other's type. And so we became friends. We would just call each other, text each other. And he would check on me when he knew I was going through a rough time um, with the divorce and kids and stuff like that, you know. Um, and the same vice versa with me. And then after becoming such good friends, you know, things started to, we started to fall in love. Um, anyway, uh, I wasn't upset about him being home because I knew that, you know, he, he's big with he's great with his hands hey get your minds out of the gutter um but he's great with it, it, fixing things up and you know making uh a, he, he could do anything he could build any furniture he could um fix electricity he's he's excellent the only thing not really plumbing but you know he's not a plumber he's a retired teacher but, and he's also an artist, you know, Tommy Extra, he worked with me. But um, basically, because we're friends and we have things in common, so with the first marriage, um, we were friends. I mean, we dated for four years before we got married, but uh, we didn't have the, the things in common with art and writing and school and, you know, college and the same career he, he never really wanted me to be a teacher he would say it's a waste uh, that I, you know I put so much energy into a career that I was never gonna make a lot of money from I should become a lawyer um so he didn't respect that career choice of mine every once in a while he would say oh you work so hard you know you're dedicated but um so what I'm trying to say is we didn't have things in common as much as um, with with um, my husband Devin so please prayers up I know I was rambling on um, hi my MG from the OC